Hi everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to calculate time dilation, a key concept of Einstein's theory of relativity, and hopefully in a way that just about everyone can understand. And I'll also throw in a few examples of this theory in action. Uh, so Einstein pioneered this idea in the early 20th century as a result of recent experimental evidence that showed that the speed of light is constant from all reference frames. It wasn't until years later that this hypothesis was proven making it a full-blown theory explaining the amazing and mysterious nature of the world around us. Unfortunately, these effects aren't noticeable unless you're moving at high velocities or you're close to a strong gravitational field. To this day, relativity has been backed by more evidence than almost any other theory and so far has been shown to hold up perfectly, even at extremely precise measurements. So here's Einstein's equation for calculating time dilation. It can be derived fairly simply using the Pythagorean theorem and a little algebra. So let's dive in and try an example. Say we want to plan a trip to the closest star to our sun. Our spacecraft travels at 90% the speed of light. Assuming we travel there and back at a constant speed, how much time will have passed on Earth? Well, since we know the distance and the velocity, and velocity is equal to distance over time, we can figure out how much time it'll take by plugging in the numbers. A velocity of 90% the speed of light can also be written as 0.9 light years per year, but we need light years to cancel, so our answer is left in terms of years. And we can do this by taking the inverse of 0.9, which 1 divided by 0.9 is 1.111. Multiply the two together, and we get about 4.7 years. Since we want to go there and back, multiply it by 2, and the round trip takes just under 9.5 years. Now that we know how much Earth time the trip will take, let's go back to the dilation formula to find out how much time it'll take from our perspective on the spaceship. We'll enter in our velocity and the time it takes relative to the Earth. The seas cancel, and we're left with our round trip taking only about 4 years from our perspective, less than half the amount of time experienced on Earth. So while our friends have aged more than nine years on Earth, we've aged only four on our spaceship. But wait, if we've traveled eight and a half light years in only four years, does that mean our rocket is traveling more than twice the speed of light? Actually, no, because there's also an effect called length contraction. Imagine there's a giant ruler along our path. The faster we go, the more space contracts around us, making the distance we have to travel shorter. So what is the relation between velocity and length contraction, or velocity and time dilation? Well, for both cases, it's the same. This relation is called the Lorenz factor. During our trip through interstellar space, we were traveling at 0.9c. Following the chart, the Lorenz factor is just over 2, meaning that Earth experienced just over twice as much time relative to us, and the space around us was contracted by the same factor of about 2. From this chart, we can also see that time dilation increases exponentially with velocity. So let's see what happens if we're traveling even closer to the speed of light. Let's take a trip to another galaxy. The closest galaxy to the Milky Way is Andromeda, over 2.5 million light years away. In order to make the trip, we now have an even more powerful spaceship capable of traveling 99.9999999% the speed of light. That's 99% followed by 8 more 9s. So let's figure this out starting with the amount of time it'll take from Earth's perspective. Well, since we're traveling so close to the speed of light, this problem becomes easy. Traveling 2.5 million light years will take 2.5 million years. Now here's the interesting part. How much time does it take from our perspective on the spacecraft? Going back to the original formula and plugging the numbers in, we find that it only takes about 36 years. Now compare that to the 2.5 million years of Earth time. That means when you return from a round trip, the Earth will be at year AD 5 million, and you will only have aged 72 years, a single lifetime. Some people might call this time travel. So this raises the question, what about an astronaut in the International Space Station? How far into the future do they travel during a six-month stay? Well, not a whole lot, just a few milliseconds. Their velocity is way too slow to make a noticeable impact. When using this equation, it's important that the stationary variable t must be from an inertial reference frame. 
This means the variable cannot be used if the observer experiences acceleration, like changing velocity or turning, or is near a strong gravitational field. Earth observers can be approximated as being in an inertial reference frame because Earth's gravitational field is weak enough to be negligible. That's the end of my first video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, and with enough interest, I'll produce other videos and take requests. Uh, but in the meantime, be sure to remember the moral of the video. If you want to stay young, get a really fast spacecraft.